That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. Every leader needs a follower, and Regina George's reign over North Shore High would be impossible without her number two, Gretchen Wieners. Irregardless, ex-boyfriends are just off-limits to friends. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. Gretchen is Regina's top enforcer, maintaining the strict social order that protects the Queen Bee's power. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row, and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. She's also Regina's only true confidant, entrusted with the dark secrets the leader hides from everyone else. I mean, her parents totally don't sleep in the same bed anymore, if that's what you mean. But being, theoretically, the second most popular girl in school doesn't give Gretchen any real power. She fiercely defends a set of arbitrary, oppressive rules that privately make her miserable. Two years ago, she told me that hoop earrings were her thing and that I wasn't allowed to wear them anymore. Her status fails to command the respect of the guy she's hung up on. I have to talk to you. Well, I love you. And her best friend isn't even nice to her. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Nonetheless, Gretchen is completely subservient to her leader, no matter how badly she's treated. The meaner Regina was to her, the more Gretchen tried to win Regina back. So what drives the Gretchens of the world to put up with so much abuse just to retain their positions near the top? She knew it was better to be in the plastics, hating life, than to not be in at all. Through Gretchen, we can understand the mindset of the follower type the one who falls in line behind a cruel authoritarian, even if it means giving up their own agency and identity. Here's our take on Gretchen Wieners and why some people choose to follow, what they gain from it, what they lose, and whether they can gain the courage to go their own way. So fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community where millions of people come together to take classes that fuel their creative journey. If you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below, you'll get two free months of Skillshare Premium. So join today and start exploring your creativity. Growing up female in this world is not easy. Mean Girls was inspired by Rosalind Wiseman's book, Queen Bees and Wannabes, a book of parental advice on helping young girls navigate the ruthless world of high school and its strict social structures. To the outside world, it looks like they all are the best of friends, but in that group are very rigid hierarchies. At the top of these hierarchies Wiseman describes is the Queen Bee. Why are you so obsessed with me? Directly beneath her is what Wiseman dubs the sidekick, the one who, quote, will back her no matter what, because her power depends on the confidence she gets from the Queen Bee. But I'm always on your left. Wiseman lays out four characteristics of the Queen Bee's sidekick. One, she's jealous of someone else being friends with the Queen Bee. Why would Regina send you guys candy canes and not me? Two, if you're the parent of the sidekick, the Queen Bee is your daughter's authority figure, not you. Well, I mean, you wouldn't buy a skirt without asking your friends first if it looks good on you. The third attribute of a sidekick, Wiseman says, is that she feels like it's just the two of them and everyone else is a wannabe. She doesn't even like you that much. And finally, Wiseman says parents will know your daughter is a sidekick if you think her best friend pushes her around. Give me your phone. Teen movies and shows about popular cliques ruling their schools almost always feature the sidekick character by the Queen Bee's side. Jawbreakers, Marcy is so submissive to boss Courtney Shane that she goes along with a plot to cover up murder, no questions asked. Is your child a follower? I'm done. And you know what? Can I go now? I was deeply concerned because, yes, Oprah, my child is a follower. The follower character in Heather's, Heather McNamara, even attempts suicide because she thinks all the cool kids are doing it. Everyone jump off a bridge, would you? Probably. These stories illustrate that the power of the cruel mean girl at the top depends on the blind obedience of the second in command. Yet, perhaps none of these stories get at the dark complexity of the sidekick's mindset as accurately as Mean Girls does through Gretchen Wieners. I'm such a good friend. While everyone in the school knows Regina is secretly a mean girl, the Queen Bee still wears a fake, sugary-sweet mask in front of most audiences. 
only Gretchen gets to see fully into the unfiltered depths of the Queen's darkness. If you even knew how mean she really is. This makes Gretchen feel special. Regina, wait! Talk to me! Nobody understands me! I understand you. Yet this illusion of intimacy is just something Regina has cultivated to control her subordinate. In other kinds of stories, we're used to seeing sidekicks as largely noble characters who support their leaders unconditionally with little concern for themselves. I'm going to Mordor alone. Of course you are. And I'm coming with you. But this relationship is only as reciprocal as the leader allows. And when the leader is more villain than hero, their dynamic becomes more like a master and servant. They're gaining on us, sir. We'll have to jettison something. It's been an honor to serve you, sir. Gretchen exists solely as an extension of Regina, who gets the pleasure of carrying out the dictator's dirty work. Regina wanted me to give you this. Being Regina's confidant also gives Gretchen structural power and, in theory, leverage over Regina. Maybe she feels weird around me because I'm the only person that knows about her nose job. Because she alone holds the key to information that could bring her superior down. We gotta crack Gretchen Wieners. We crack Gretchen and then we crack the lock on Regina's whole dirty history. In this way, Gretchen also has elements of what Rosalind Wiseman calls the banker type whose specialty is banking information about girls to use to her advantage later. So, have you seen any guys that you think are cute yet? Yet Gretchen is deeply reluctant to wield that power over Regina. A sidekick relationship relies on sublimating your own identity in service of someone else's. But what is it about the Regina Georges of the world that inspires sidekicks, willing to set aside their own self-interest completely for a leader who treats them so disrespectfully? even cruelly. One of the most excruciatingly difficult experiences as a parent is to watch your child follow somebody, another kid, who is horrible, who is mean. What does Gretchen get out of being a follower? What is she following Regina toward? Some followers stay close to their leader in hopes of overthrowing her and becoming the top dog themselves. I prayed for the death of Heather Chandler many times. But a true sidekick personality doesn't even think of replacing her boss. Craving closeness to power rather than power itself, Gretchen self-identifies as a number two. Brutus is just as cute as Caesar. Okay, Brutus is just as smart as Caesar. People totally like Brutus just as much as they like Caesar. Instead of outright power or dominance, Regina's followers, the Plastics, possess a specific type of popularity that University of North Carolina psychologist Mitch Prinstein calls status. Who are the Plastics? They're teen royalty. If North Shore was Us Weekly, they would always be on the cover. Through their close proximity to Regina, the focal point of the school, Gretchen and Karen receive attention, that gold standard of teen world, and thereby achieve status. Likewise, their friendship group isn't bound together by liking each other, but by a shared sense of superiority, which is familiar to us from other depictions of rich, popular girls. She's my friend because we both know what it's like to have people be jealous of us. There are people I work with and our job is being popular and shit. <laughs> also, like other famous girl groups, the Plastics affirm and maintain their status through rituals of conspicuous consumption. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. And by being hyper-vigilant about their appearance. It's all about details. Mm. If you don't pay attention to details, you're doomed. Look at my nails. While Regina knows that her so-called rules are arbitrary fictions she's made up to control her peers, Whatever. Those rules aren't real. Gretchen's commitment to these structures of the social hierarchy is total. Now, if you break any of these rules, you can't sit with us at lunch. Well, I mean, not just you, like, any of us. Her unquestioning devotion to the laws of the plastics mirrors the zeal of members within a religious cult or an authoritarian regime. In our Regina George video, we looked at how Regina illuminates the tactics and psychology of a dictator. And in traditional autocracies, there is often a private army of enforcers who pledge allegiance to the leader rather than the state. It was time to turn our attention to the army of skanks. Karen, who's known for lacking smarts, I can put my whole fist in my mouth, might represent the dictator's unquestioning mindless soldiers. Meanwhile, Gretchen, who knows everybody's private information, resembles an autocrat's secret police. Gretchen Wiener knows everybody's business. She knows everything about everyone. She maintains Regina's control through keeping a file containing each student's weak points. You let it out, honey. Put it in the book. 
As a wealthy heiress, she's totally rich because her dad invented toaster strudel. Gretchen is also reminiscent of those rich citizens whom savvy dictators co-opt into their states, rewarding them with prominent positions in order to make them invested in the system and neutralize any potential threats to the dictator's power. Authoritarian structures like the ones Gretchen seeks out thrive largely by eliminating the need for their subjects to make decisions for themselves. You may think you like someone, but you could be wrong. Followers like Gretchen take comfort in allowing someone else to dictate their realities for them. Now what would we do on any other day? Pre-lunch touch-ups? That's right, Marcy. And to clearly define the roles they have to play. It's the unspoken truth of humanity that you crave subjugation. Ultimately, this authoritarian structure is so successful that the second-in-command ends up being more invested in Regina's law and order than Regina herself is. You're wearing sweatpants. It's Monday. You can't sit with us! Even when Gretchen's at last pushed to her breaking point and betrays her leader, she desperately searches for a new, similar ruler to fill that top spot. So what are we doing this weekend? Was I the new Queen Bee? Then, as the dictator state itself is crumbling, she refuses to acknowledge the truth. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. And after the dictatorship gives way to a new order of freedom, Gretchen still manages to find a subculture with rigid hierarchies where she can continue being a subservient number two. And Gretchen found herself a new clique and a new Queen Bee to serve. Mean Girls ends with a triumphant overthrow of the social order. The Queen Bee gets her comeuppance, her power is redistributed to her once oppressed people, and her former followers are liberated and become self-actualized. Hi, this is Karen Smith. It's 68 degrees, and there's a 30% chance that it's already raining. In similar stories, too, we derive pleasure from the parting message that the influence of cruel leaders is limited to that small, short window of adolescence. Heather, my love, there's a new sheriff in town. But Gretchen's version of a happy ending is still to remain a follower. Actress Lacey Chabert imagines a hopeful conclusion for her character. I think Gretchen's probably married with like 10 little babies running around. 10? Feeding them toaster strudel every morning. <laughs> I think she and Jason probably got married. It's she fi she finally locked it down with Jason. And we might see some hope for Gretchen in her friendship with Karen, which genuinely is a caring, reciprocal relationship. Gretchen looks out for Karen when others don't. And then you have your first cousins, and then you have your second cousins. No, honey. Mm -mm. That's not right, is it? That is so not right. And when everyone else turns on Gretchen, Karen is there to catch her. So Gretchen is capable of forming positive bonds not based on subservience to status. Yet when we leave her, she's not hanging out with Karen. She's still putting her need for a social hierarchy first. Unfortunately, the research suggests that someone like Gretchen, who continues to prize status at the cost of her own individuality, will only bring herself future unhappiness. Seeking status is a way of putting your happiness into someone else's hands, saying the only way that I will feel good is if everyone else constantly tells me that I am high in status according to them. Followers tend to grow into anxious adults, Dr. Princeton says, more likely to suffer from depression and addiction, and have trouble maintaining a career or romantic relationship. This makes sense because Gretchen's commitment to being the sidekick is also a commitment to the unhealthy mental habits she's learned from being in the plastics. These mean girls uphold their sense of superiority by belittling others. Here, check it out, Katie. It's our burn book. So we cut out girls' pictures from the yearbook, and then we wrote comments. Seeking refuge from their own issues with body image and self-esteem, My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. They project their anxiety outward as a relational aggression toward others. Yet, while this gives the plastics an illusion of control over the messiness of adolescent life, ultimately it doesn't work to ease their deeper discontent, rage, and self-doubt. Calling somebody else fat won't make you any skinnier. Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. While most people eventually outgrow many of the worst aspects of adolescent behavior, the deeper dynamics at play in high school cliques remain ingrained in our very nature. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> our social behavior is an outgrowth of primal instincts, the same herd mentality that allowed humanity to elude predators. 
and we can only assume that Gretchen's habits will die hard. Sadly, the sidekicks of the world and their follower mentality continue to endure well into adulthood. Maybe we're not in that book because everybody likes us. And I don't want to be punished for being well-liked. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community that offers affordable classes designed to fit your schedule and your skill level. With Skillshare, you can discover creative, entertaining workshops that help to break up the monotony of a day spent indoors. One Skillshare staff pick you can check out is Colette Perry's class on creating your own stop-motion videos. The stop-motion animator will walk you through laying out your idea, shooting, and editing it. All you need is your iPhone or Android to start. Right now, Skillshare is offering our viewers two months' access to all their classes for free. But that's only if you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below. So join today and jumpstart your creative journey.